What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new, my name is Corey and today we're going to be adding two new printers, two Bamboo Lab printers to our Expanding 3 printing business. Over the last month or so I've been using the P1S and the A1. I've used them both pretty much 24-7, ran into some issues with both, but one of them stood out as the clear winner for my business moving forward. And I'm gonna share what that is here in a second, but am I gonna go with the A1 and save a little bit more money? Or am I gonna go with the more expensive P1S? And uh, let's go ahead and check it out. Like I said, I got both printers sitting right here, but let's go ahead and get into how I made the decision to go with this printer. So my 3D printing business actually started a month ago with the Anchor Make M5C. A great little printer, I had no issues with it. I shouldn't say that, I had a couple issues with it. Some of the extruder uh, issues that people have been having, uh, I had an issue with that as well. I, and after kind of taking a look at it, I found that it didn't have multicolor printing, which I wasn't sure at the time if I was gonna be getting into. Now having AMS systems on both of these, I realize it is an absolute must have. So I decided to actually return that Anchor Make. And as I was doing my research on the printer that I actually wanted to get, I actually had both of these at the same time that I had the Anchor Make. But as I was doing my research, I found that Bamboo Lab kept coming up as the best beginner friendly printer, as well as the most reliable, as well as uh, very good to be starting a business with. So for me, I said, hey, it might make sense for me to take a look at Bamboo Lab. So I actually jumped in and bought the P1S. But first I actually wanna talk about my experience with the A1. So I had bought the A1 from Micro Center actually about a week after I bought the P1S and I absolutely fell in love with the A1. Uh, the compact size of it in comparison to the P1S, especially when you add the AMS light to the top of it, takes up about the same footprint as the P1S. And as everyone knows, it's uh, about $400 cheaper. I'm gonna put the pricing right up here so you guys can see that. But let's talk about what I've seen after running this printer for pretty much 24 seven for the last month. So the printer itself, absolutely rock solid. No issues, no complaints with the prints with the print quality or anything along those lines. Now let's talk about the AMS light system on the other hand. I had some weird issues with the AMS light system when I had started to put some of the inlay, inland filament, inland, 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 whatever you pronounce it, uh, from Micro Center, their proprietary brand. When I tried to use that in my AMS light system, I don't know if it was something with the spool being too big or too heavy, but when I tried to load this in, I don't know if it wasn't seated properly or whatever the case was, but this filament did not seem to want to work with my AMS light system. Taking a look at the size of the roll from AMS, it's, or from, um, from Micro Center, it doesn't seem to be any bigger or any smaller than the normal Bamboo Lab filaments spool, so I'm not sure what issues I was having, but for whatever reason, I couldn't get it to feed properly. A lot of you guys commented and said you didn't have that issue, so I'm not really sure if it was just maybe Bamboo Lab changed their filament from what people were using before, or if I'm just an idiot, not sure. But either way, the filament issues that I was having with the AMS light wasn't a deal breaker for me because I actually switched over to Isan's filament. Um, well, at the time I switched over to Isan. I guess I still am kind of using, I'm trying to figure out what brand I should be using. Uh, any brands want to sponsor me, go ahead and leave me a comment down below or email me. So I'm not really sure what kind of filament I'm going to be using. Do I just stick with Bamboo Lab? So I've tried some Elegoo filament. I've tried Isan's filament. And then obviously, like I just said, I was trying the filament from Micro Center. And I even think I have some other filament up here as well from Polymaker. I'm not sure what filament to use. Let me know in the comment section below what filament you guys use. But now let's switch over to the P1S and my experience with it. The printer itself had a couple issues, but we'll get into that. Let's start with the AMS light system or the AMS system. Absolutely love this system. I never had any issues with feeding. I love the fact that it's fully enclosed and it just seems to be a little bit higher quality. Obviously it's a lot more expensive, higher quality than the AMS light system from what I've been seeing. I haven't had any issues feeding. I haven't had any issues with 
uh, anything along those lines. And I feel like it goes in, it's easier to use. I always found myself struggling to get the filament into the back of the AMS light system, no matter how I had it configured, whether it was on the side or up top, I just always seem to struggle with it. I love the build quality of the P1S. Even though it's running right now, everything just seems solid. Plastic sides on the side here, the glass, the tempered glass on the front and the back. The big downside of this is obviously the screen isn't nearly as nice as it is on the A1. But again, for a 3D printing business slash farm, this isn't necessarily a deal breaker for me. Now, I mentioned that I had some issues with the P1S. The issues were, and I actually still have some of the uh, issues right here. This was some of the prints that I was getting on the P1S. So that's not great. After doing a little bit of research and also putting in the comment section, you guys let me know that it was the bed and it wasn't, a, it was bed adhesion problems. So after cleaning it with dish soap and some warm water, I had no problems moving forward with it. And it seemed to me that all of my problems were fixed as soon as I took the bed off, washed it down with the right soap and then put it back on. So that small problem that I had was gone after doing that one thing. Now, some of the things that surprised me about both of the printers is the print quality. Even though the P1S uses a Core XY design and the A1 is a bed slinger, I actually found that the quality on both of the prints are almost identical. I could not tell the difference when I had one printer print something versus another. Let me show you. So both of these Christmas trees were printed out on the P1S, I believe the P1S, and you can see not any issues here. And this one was printed out on the A1. Not any difference between the two that I can tell. So my deciding factor is one big obvious one, but for my needs, it made sense. So when you take a look at the P1S, you can see it has an enclosure. The A1 does not. The A1 probably takes up a little less space than the P1S. So space was a consideration. But I ultimately went with the, it's not actually that heavy. Ultimately went with the P1S with the combo and I got two of them. Now let me explain why. So the deciding factor for me to go with the P1S is a pretty obvious one. Not obvious why I made the decision, but obvious based off of looking at it. It's actually the enclosure. I love the enclosure aspect of things, but for a couple of reasons. One, as you guys have seen or gonna see, my space here is pretty limited. I'm actually using a room in my spare room that's right in our house as you walk in. Pretty small space. It's not a really small space, but for what we are gonna be using it for, I only really have room for maybe a couple of more printers, but I don't wanna turn this into a warehouse full of just a ton of printers. One, the P1S is gonna look a little bit nicer when people come in. It's gonna look more like refrigerators or microwaves than actual 3D printers, which the look doesn't normally matter, especially when running a 3D printing business, but when you do have it in the living room like we have it, I kind of want it to look a little nice and seamless. So when we do have guests over, they're not like, what in the heck is going on? They probably still will, but that's one consideration. Now, the enclosure also gives me the opportunity to print with other materials such as ABS, ASA, and PC. And you know, I don't necessarily plan on printing with one of those materials, but it opens the door. So if I decided that I wanted to, depending on what I plan on making that long term, I might want that enclosure. But another aspect of things is I'm gonna be moving to the basement. The basement is nice, uh, absolutely a nice space, but it's not temperature controlled. I also kind of use it as a wood shopping space. So I don't want any of the dust, any of the normal just dirt that's down in a basement to get into the printers and affect the print quality. So yes, the big picture is I could have absolutely gone with probably three a1 combos for the price of the two P1S combos. But looking into the future for what my business is gonna potentially need and also what we need right now, I ultimately made the decision to go with the P1S is because of the things I just mentioned. So because it's gonna be moving into the basement where it's not temperature controlled, the dust and the debris from the woodworking business and the, flu the fluctuation of the temperature down there with the draft from the door, there's a lot of things that could potentially have uh, an effect on the print quality that I just don't wanna have to deal with. So for my business, 
business, sometimes going with the more expensive option is actually gonna work out long-term better for me, just based off of what we plan on doing and expanding down into the basement. But make sure you're following for the next video where I'm actually gonna be setting these printers up, rearranging some things, and then probably going over another tour, even though I just did one. And if you didn't check that out, you should go check that video out to kind of see what the before and after looks like. But make sure you're sub to the channel to figure out what we do moving forward with the business and how things are progressing. But let me know in the comment section down below, are you team A1 or are you team P1S? And let me know if you think I made the right decision or if you think I made the wrong decision, let me know in the comment section below. Turn that bell notification on as well and give me a thumbs up. If you don't mind sharing the video as well, we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of next year. So pretty tall task, but I know with all your support, we'll do it. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.